All right, last test into the sunset. This, this is the future. <laughs> this is the future. Welcome back. This is the second episode where I show you how I build the hardware. The Guardian idea stems from participating in this Hackster IO challenge. And at the time I was just watching the news, there's a lot of forest fire in the uh, west coast of the United States. So I thought it would be cool to build a robot to kind of help with firefighting. And if you haven't seen my pitch or idea, it's in my first episode of this playlist. Feel free to check it out. But here I'm just unboxing the stuff that I received. Um, I applied for the Boron 404X, which is a cellular IoT device that allows you to have control your robots or other automation from cellular from the web platform. The hardware itself is really looking a lot like the ESP32, the Feather, and it also comes with some breadboard and a USB, micro USB, and then an antenna for cellular uh, connections. And it also comes with a hexter.io sticker. Now let's open up the boron and have a closer look. Yeah, so it's got uh, several GPIO pins. You have the TX, RX. It really has the same size as the Feather, ESP32 Feather, which I believe it is based on that. And everything, the pins are all pre-soldered, so which you can just put it on your breadboard. You can also attach a uh, 3.5 volts battery right to the side so it can power, low power. Now, I originally wanted to 3D print my robot chassis. That is a tanked version, tracked versions. Uh, luckily, one of my previous uh, co-worker uh, who has a, a chassis that he's not using anymore and I just inherited it for free, which is super helpful. And shout out to Alex for that. Once I got the robot, I quickly do a schematics of what sensors and motors, how I want to connect them. And so the first thing would be testing the motors since these robots, this robot has been in the shelf for about one year, two years without running at all. So I was kind of concerned whether uh, the motors were even working or the motor controllers. So I strip some wires and connect them to the positive negative end of the motor. I'm using a very cheap wire stripper thing that uh, comes from Amazon. I'm trying to connect the positive end and the negative end to the motor controller. Uh, this dual motor controller supports two motors. So there's there's two sides of two sets of each. And it can take, I believe, from 12 volts to 50 volts of power, which I'll hook up the battery later. The motor controller is called the Sabertooth dual motor controller. And it has several settings with the on and off pin here you can see. The motor controller takes a digital signal from I'm sorry, a, a TTL signal from Arduino. So that's why I was hooking up with the Arduino to quickly prototype. And you can send numbers of 0 to 127 to tell how fast the motor is spinning. And it also tells the direction of the motor where it should spin. So you can go forward, backwards, and a combinations of that. And here I am connecting my battery interface. I have a connector that I built previously for another project. And I will be testing with a 11.1 volts of LiPo battery, 50C. Later on, I will be upgrading to a 22.2 volts, which is the battery in series, to kind of amp that more power to give the, the robot go faster. The battery connector here, I believe it's a XT90. It's an XT90 connector connected to the, the yellow interface, which is XT60, and then straight into the motor controller, positive and negative. And then as usual, I just, I'm just here to make sure I'm not shorting the battery. That's the number one thing you don't want to do. Checking the, the motor is correctly connected. Nothing is short. It's just good to double check and making sure since the chassis is metal, so it's conductive. And we'll plug right in. And here I'm checking connectivity again. This time I am checking the voltage, make sure it's supplying enough voltage to the right place. Checking that five volts is probably 
properly going to the Arduino. I'm checking 11.1 .1 volts is probably input to the motor controller. And so one that's checked, I have a short script in Arduino that I can quickly control one of the motor. And so once I verified that my script is working, my Arduino can properly control the motor controller. I quickly set up the second motor and connect the power. And just like that, I already have two wheels spinning. And so here, so here I realized one of the belt is a little bit loose, especially the right one. You can see from the side view of how loose the belt is, which is not good. You want a good tension of it, but also not too tight. So I had to loosen the tire and then tighten them up a little bit more. All right, looks a lot better, but man, it, it is, you can hear that it's scraping along the metal, which I later had to take it off. Okay, so moving on to the relay, I have the four channel relay and I will be using two of the channels. One channel would be controlling a servo motor, which acts as a tilting machine, kind of a breaking the vegetation in the fire line construction. And the other one would be motor pump. So it will be pumping out water and spraying out water to, I guess, the fire. Now at this point, I was using a stepper motor with a stepper motor controller here. Uh, while it works, I quickly realized that there's way too many pins I need to use and I have to reserve it for the boron later on. So I figured I could just use the relay to control the traditional servo motor on and off because I really don't care about the speed at this point and I don't care about controlling the stepper motor of how many angles uh, radius to turn. It really doesn't matter, I just want it to spin so it can break the vegetation or the swirl underneath when the robot is moving. And so once everything is working, I quickly connected my Arduino to my Jetson Orin. And I have a command to use my controller to command the relay and the motor as well. I also 3D printed this rod that could act as an axle for spinning. You can think of the farming machine where they uh, tilt the soil. That was what I was trying to mimic. Uh, I, I didn't have enough time to kind of design the blades. And this is the fastest thing I could do at that moment. They all look like ninja stars, so it was kind of funny. But hey, it works for a concept prototype. In the future, I'm looking for a stronger, faster motor that has a lot of torque. So I could really tilt the soil out kind of like a tranching machine. At this point I already have my controller hooked up to the Jetson Orin which I can control the entire robot. It's a little bit of a jump but I will cover all the code in the next episode. But you should know I was able to control with the joystick going left, turning left, turning right, forward, backward, and uh, with the uh, controlling of the servo as well for that mach uh, tilting machine in front. I had the camera in front because I wanted to detect the fire. The The LiDAR on top was used for obstacle detection so I can avoid it automatically. Yeah, tested indoor, everything looks fine. And the way I power other sensors is I was using a power board distributed by the F110 community. But really you can just find a separate battery to power all of them together. And the Jetson Orin uses a 12 volt battery. The LiDAR also uses 12 volt and the camera is just a micro uh, USB-C direct interface to the Jetson Orion. Okay, I just migrated my robot here. Yeah, so at this point I was testing it outdoor. I am not near any forest. So it was kind of hard for me to find a terrain that I could go around like that. And a lot of things was breaking, like I, I didn't solder my motors good enough, so it was, was kind of loose. And some of the 3D printing parts <laughs> fell apart, so it was a lot of debugging. But hey, for a first spin, I think it was pretty good. And thankfully, there's some mulch around the, the grass, around the tree, so I wanted to simulate, see if I can kind of push away some of the mulch here, but the blades was way too small <laughs> for that. Uh, but at, at least it can go through the terrain pretty well. Yeah, you can probably tell by now the 11 volts battery is just not powering this robot fast enough. So it took a while to go over the tree, but it works.
and I'm pretty happy with it. Yeah, so one of the rods was about to break, I believe right around here where it got jammed underneath the robot. The filament I was using was the support filament because I just want to prototype it really cheap. And yeah, it bent right here. Okay, that's an interesting breakpoint. Just cut it right off. So I, I got more design work to do, and hopefully I'll be using a metal rod in the future. Oh, it looks like I broke a lot more parts here too. Eh, doesn't matter. Keep going. The size of this robot is quite deceptive, but until I start standing next to it, you can kind of see how big it actually is and quite heavy. The company that made this chassis is called the Superdroid, and they are in charge of making robot chassis for, I guess, first responders and military. So I guess you could call it a heavy duty for this, which I really appreciate getting this for free. Otherwise, it would be super expensive. All right, last test into the sunset. Whew, it's getting cold. And so the thing in Chicago is that it's all flat. There's no terrain that I could test. I should probably go to Colorado or something. Let's see how far this goes. Yeah, it was about 40, 30 degrees Fahrenheit when I was testing the robot outside. It was freezing. Here I was just testing the range of my joystick controller and how far I can control it. I think it's about roughly 10 feet, 20 feet really or well. so. I don't know, I couldn't estimate it. Still going. And it stops. Okay. Oh, never, never mind, it's still going. So the range is about something like that. Pretty cool. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> and as I was testing the robot, there was a friendly gentleman with an electric bike approached me and we were just chatting. He was building rockets yeah, when he was working, scary. very tech savvy. He knows a lot of DJI drones and he shows me a collection, a shelf collections of DJI drones. And so we were just having a chat, a super nice guy. So, yeah, <laughs> you want to say hi? This, this is the future. <laughs> this is the future. All right, what a cool guy. Um, it's kind of sunset already. Uh, I think I'll call it today. Nobody's here anymore. And it's very cold, it's like 40 degrees. Oh man, this thing's heavy too. 20 pounds, 30? I'm just going to shut off right here. All right. And there you go. Well, that concludes the testing today. My hand is freezing. Whew. I'm going to go home. <laughs> After I go home, I warmed up myself and realized I have a lot more work to do because everything was broken, as I was telling you. So... I put my robot back to my floored soldering station. I don't have a table for this. Just put everything on the floor and try to fix everything. So here I'm just like opening it up and re-solder some of the connectors. Here's something that's probably worth mentioning. I have a very cheap solder kit that I bought about 20 bucks from Amazon. And you can kind of see it's making these solder balls, which are very bad. And it tells you how bad the quality is. And I was having a hard time to solder the connectors together. Later on, I finally bought a more uh, pricier solder wires and it made a huge difference. So yeah, don't buy the cheap ones. Um, they're not really that good and waste your time. Very easy to break as well. Okay, and while I make this mess, this concludes this episode. 
I have a lot more documentations that I'll release in the future, or maybe I'll put in my Patreon. If you have any suggestions, let me know, and feel free to check out my videos. I'll see you on the next episode.